Okay, so um, we'll start with the uh, line work and just apply some Photoshop stuff to that. <coughs> Where is it? There it is. So uh, we're going to put this into Photoshop. So Have you guys done this sort of thing before? Probably. You've gone through a whole semester, so is there anything you guys don't know? Like, I'm going to go over manipulating, say, a material from, I'm just going to snatch it off the internet and warp it to, this is a good example for us because we have a, uh, a sort of curved wall. I don't know if, how many of you are doing, like, the curved walls from the Cardinal House. But um, you can go over manipulating the materials in perspective, uh, warping them around corners. Um, we'll play with some of the layer attributes. Do you guys know about like the overlay, multiply, soft light, hard light? Okay, nodding heads. That's all I need. You don't have to say anything. Just nod your head or shake your head. That's it. Thanks. Okay, we'll go over that too. Good. Okay, so if you're bringing in line work, especially PNG, you're likely going to have a transparent background. What we can do is just toss a white rectangle behind it. So you can see. Um, what should we start with? Start with this. Is it a mullion? Um, Okay, panel. Um, don't look at my email. Uh, what kind of panel? Okay. Um, so it doesn't really matter what we choose. Uh, do you guys know about um, this? So if you're working with larger renderings and you're printing it out on a big board at the end of the semester, maybe grabbing a larger image will give you better resolution at the end. So grab, an, yeah, grab a big one. It'll show up better on your board. Um, so we're just going to snatch that and copy paste so uh, do you guys know control T Transform. okay good heads good um, and you know the other options it has with it so scale rotate skew distort perspective okay cool and you guys are comfortable with those okay good let's do that then just switch this around. So all I'm doing here is trying to align up. Uh, I know that this is in, this is like an AXO shot, right? So all these lines are running the same direction all these axes. Uh, if you manipulate the material to follow those lines, more or less, um, your material will look a little more appropriate on there. So maybe precast concrete is not going to be like the most obvious thing to distinguish. But uh, And you guys also use marquee, marquee tool? Um, polygon, yeah, yeah, shake a head, no, okay, good, a shake, 
So if you use this guy, it's really handy. Uh, once your material is in place <clears throat> and aligned correctly, all you do is click. You can hold shift and it'll go uh, 90 degrees. Um, and what you can do then is follow the lines that we've brought in from Rhino and Illustrator. Trace this guy out. I'm going to ignore how accurate it needs to be. Um, if you double click, it'll last point you click, it will join to the first point you click to. So, uh, and now that you have that, uh, do you guys know about layer masks? Yes, good. Nodding heads catching on. Okay, so if you click this guy, everything else goes away. It's still there. It's hidden behind this mask. And you can disable it if you want to do anything with it. But um, it's a nice way to do like a non-destructive editing to your materials. So say we also had uh, another piece of concrete precast concrete. Say this guy was precast concrete here. Um, what we can do is just alt drag that guy up. <clears throat> It'll duplicate it. And if we just delete the uh, layer mask, we have that same thing there, whole thing. Um, and we just have to do another layer mask and trace over that. It's just, you see the value in that kind of? Yeah, OK, cool. I'm not going to go over it, beat it to death. Um, we're going to do one more in here, say. And we'll wrap it around this sort of curved wall, mm -hmm. which is difficult. And do you, what material is that? Pink texture. As long as it's not the artist coming up. Okay. okay. Toss. Mm. <coughs> this is gorgeous. <laughs> Okay, so again, pasting it in. <clears throat> um, what you'll encounter often is a material comes in, a, the pattern just isn't big enough for your wall. Say we want these flowers to be kind of small on there, nice to scale flowers. <coughs> um, and often, I don't know what this guy is or not, if you stack them, they're not seamless, right? So, this, I can search seamless yeah, textures. do that first. <laughs> uh, what we're going to try and do here is fake it. Uh, yeah, in this case, that might work. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so we could do that. Um, beautiful. If we merge those together, put them over here, and let's even flip that horizontal so it's just complete mirror. Merge those together. So you can see we're getting a much larger piece of wallpaper here. Just for the sake of going fast, let's just do this and call it. Okay, so now that it's close to being the right size, um, why is it transparent? Oh, it is. Okay, cool. So, all right. If if you guys are doing this and say it's not a PNG that you brought in and it's a JPEG, and you don't have that transparent background. Um, right, but if you still have a white background, it's solid, so you can't see. Yeah, so if you just go down to 50% or whatever, and you can manipulate this but still see it and what's behind it. So oh, this is going to be fun. Um, the warp tool is uh, super helpful. It's a little, you need to get some practice with it because it's, 
it's weird. So what it does is it, you can essentially just mold this material around whatever your um, whatever you're looking at. So really all we're looking at right here is this sort of face in here. And again, it doesn't matter if it's um, uh, perfectly aligned with this line, because we can always put a layer mask over top of it. But if you just grab it and pretend it's curving around that wall here, hopefully it'll look a little more realistic when we bake it out. We're not baking, that's grasshopper. Sorry. Let's call it there. It's not a very good example. Control T to bring up the uh, transform box. And then if you just right click, you can sift through the options here. The warp warp is right here. Um, we'll do another, we'll do a perspective one, even though this is an actual drawing um, in, a, in a second. So um, once that's in, again, real quick. Uh, again, with this tool, Marquis, say you like, screw up and click over there. If you just hit backspace, it'll undo that last click, which is kind of handy. Um, <laughs> this is really messed up. Well, good job. It's a good challenge. Okay. So, here's our Wallpaper wall. Um, that's the warp tool. And just so we can, let's paste in another one of these. We're just going to make a box real quick out of this, just so you can understand the perspective tool in case you haven't used it before. Perspective tool lets you, I kind of used it a little bit on that one. But say you've got a building that's uh, stretching off into the distance. You can manipulate it like that. Uh, say it's on an angle, kind of like the wall section we're looking at right now. So you can start to um, map these materials to just about any surface you want. That's the point of this, is to show you guys that you can, it doesn't matter what the shape is. Building. Here you go. Okay. Um, so that's just applying materials to this um, black and white image. Again, kind of like that first example we saw. Uh, you don't have to trace these exact lines. I mean, it's pretty clean and sharp, but if you want to do something that's a little different and it's just sort of an expression, say you take this guy, you can literally place him there and again, we'll reduce that a little bit. Toss a layer mask on before you start selecting anything and just, if you hit B, take out the paintbrush, X will switch these two colors. So you can use black. What black will do is it's kind of like erasing if because we're drawing on the layer mask here. So if you put oh, not at three percent, if you draw black on the layer mask, it's that's where it creates that mask. So you, see, you can't see behind it. Um, so again, if you're just trying to get um, the expression of this material being flower wall wallpaper on here. It doesn't have to be exact. Then 
they get an idea. That material is that. That is so nasty. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Do you get the point, though? Like, yeah. it doesn't have to be exact. You can hint at a material by just overlaying the texture on top. So, OK. Uh, we're going to switch over to um, using these layer things. I forget what they're called now. Anyways, so we're going to now export the, uh, this has the rendered version um, of this wall section in it. Uh, and if we turn off the lines, by the way, you guys can get away with something just like this too, I think. Mm -hmm. um, just having <coughs> rendered out. Inclusion yeah, it's, it's basically grayscale, except for that red and blue venting. Um, if you play your line weights right, you can get a super sharp image out of it. Um, Question? Uh, since the scale is so small, these axons, is it okay to just use the line weights so that people are colored at a few hard reason? Yeah, I think for your axons, like, I don't know if you have to represent them as rendered objects, but if you have the other two renders as part of the format, so yeah, I think that maybe those are the two areas that you would want to explore. Like, <coughs> Um, so uh, the difference between what we're going to do here and what we did on the last one is instead of just leaving the material as is, what we can do is sort of pick up on all the shadows that exist in this drawing already. So because I don't want to do it again, we're just going to snag this guy. Copy him, put him over here. And uh, oh, it's transparent. Okay, so so you did that exact same uh, process, traced it out, warped it a little bit so that these guys look like they're kind of wrapped around there. Um, if you cycle through these guys here, um, what you might find is that you'll get the shadows coming through. It's kind of putting it, kind of like putting it at a lower opacity and it's semi-transparent except these guys pick up what's underneath a lot better um, what I usually do is I just choose one and then if you just cycle through the uh, options using the up and down arrows just find one that you think is appropriate um, common ones would be overlay soft light hard light uh, Screen, multiply way up at the top. Um, so I think multiply is a little dark in this one. So we can just go down. Let's say this one up here. Overlay is picking up a little bit of the shadow here, and say you like that it's bright. So overlay is working. The shadow is there, but it's not enough. You can still go in and adjust the opacity. Um, 
what else we have done? That's good. Yeah. Sure, go for it. So, um, another way of doing this that's really fast. Um, is so if I just copy this and or maybe I want to save it first and just save this to your desk desktop or downloads So if you're in a real hurry, this is kind of a quick and dirty way of um, also rendering. So if I just want to open my Illustrator file in Photoshop so it doesn't have a background and I just have my line work. So you could do this with like a perspective or a parallel or like an AXO, anything you like. Um, you're going to get this dialog box where it's asking you like what you want to open. Just say okay. So it rasterizes the file. And for some reason, there's like a transparency on this. Oh, I think I had something else open. Here, we'll just do it again really quickly. Um, yeah, that guy. So we'll just save this one again. So you would just want your line work um, out, of, or out of Rhino and having done like the actual line weights in Illustrator or wherever you want to do those. So now I have um, this rasterized image of all of my lines and I can't really see the background. So um, what you can do is just make a new layer and drag it behind those lines and go to edit, fill, and just make it white. So now we can actually um, see our lines and we're not necessarily going to use our lines for, um, like we won't keep these lines because these are now Photoshop lines, so they're kind of useless to us because they're not a vector, they're, they're not high quality. But what you can do. Can you guys go over that last semester, like the vector versus raster? I want to zoom in on the lines and show you. So um, the lines have become uh, pixels rather than vectors. So as you scale them up, they'll become um, like less clear. Okay, I want that original thing. Copy image. So another way of doing this, um, which I find is like kind of helpful. Oops. is uh, so say we had our material and we were happy with it so we just merge these two down together which the hotkey is control e um, <clears throat> we have it so this is our lines we'll just label it because it's really good to label your layers in photoshop because it can become very confusing very quickly and this is our wall material and this is just like our background layer. So another way of um, doing this just really, really quickly would be like, so we have this material here. It's just a big chunk. If we go onto this layer, onto our lines layer, we can use our um, magic wand to just select like in, oops, to just select um, like either inside or outside of that line. That's inverted for me. So if you just go select inverse, this is not doing what it usually does. My settings are changed. Your settings are changed? How do I change them back? Okay, we can just do this on my computer. 
Um, okay, so normally what you can do, and I'll show you on my computer when we do one of the other ones, is because I guess Brett's settings are inverted. Maybe it's. So, okay, now you can see that I've selected just like a boundary rather than like all of those black lines. So if you just set um, up here your settings to anti-alias and contiguous, <clears throat> what you can do is now that you're on these lines, you could essentially hide your material layer. And this should be like a closed line. Hopefully it is. If it isn't, then you'll have a little bit of trouble and you might have to use the polygonal lasso tool as well. But you can see I can select just inside this one boundary. Now, if I turn on this layer and I select the inverse, so I'm selecting everything except what I just selected. Select inverse. So now if I zoom out, you can see like I have the whole page except for this thing. And I go into my wall material, I can just delete it. Where is delete? So now I have that shape really quickly. So you could see how if you just started bringing in materials and you just flip between like your lines and the material that you're using, you can just like very, very quickly start building an image. And then um, if you had like your rendered, like just a ambient occlusion render behind that, then you could start to play with the, um, with the effects of that layer over that thing. Lights. Yeah, sure. Okay. How do you usually do your lighting? Okay, that's how I do it too. Okay, so um, another way, like if we wanted to say add lighting and we hadn't done an ambient occlusion render, um, it's a little bit harder in Photoshop to get like your shadows all in the right place, but you can kind of cheat it in, in some ways. So one way of doing that would be um, the same thing. You could like select your wall, go on to like a new layer that is clean, and just use your brush tool. Uh, is this hard or soft? Okay. And um, just change the size of it. And you can just start kind of painting in shadows and just switch them, um, change your opacity. I like 33%. I don't know why, but it works. It is my fave. But I find that it just like incrementally, like steps kind of nicely. Um, maybe we have a little bit more dark around the bottom. Switch it back. So like if you're doing a section or like a perspective inside your building that you only exported the line work for, you could see how like this could be a fairly easy thing to do in order to just kind of create like a base like lighting file. And then we could also just select like our floor and do the same thing. So go back down onto this layer. And the point with lighting is um, like good lighting, like you always have your whitest white and your blackest black, but there's like very little of each usually. Okay. So now we have this like base lighting layer. So we could turn this material back on and then we could start to play with some of these like Brett was showing. That's overlay. And if we also had a material on the ground, it would probably look a little bit better. But
I'm sure you guys uh, get the point. Any questions on that? Okay. So in case you guys have um, an actual light, let's look for a really nice sconce. Uh, so you have a light in your, yeah, this is, this is real good. In your corner, and you want to add it. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a sconce or a wall lamp or chandelier or whatever. Um, this is just a really quick way to have not just ambient lighting, but rays of light. I'm just going to cover it real quick. These guys are good because we can just scrap. So here's our sconce. Um, say it uh, is nice and aligned with the wall. A little bit smaller. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll do light first. So get out of here. And we're just going to create a new layer for light lines, I guess. Um, again, L is the hotkey for the. And just sort of go beyond where you think that light's going to go. Um, and do a sort of uh, ray outwards. If you grab your paintbrush now, again, you're on your own line. Uh, this is, <laughs> judging by the wallpaper, very high techy looking building. Let's go with some blue light. You don't want to go too far into the color spectrum for lights because really it's going to start to look kind of cheesy. So try, try and avoid this area. <laughs> Stick close to white, um, and you're probably going to want to put some white over top. But again, if I say we have 33, um, start it quite a bit down near where uh, the light is, and just sort of blend it out into the nothing. Uh, let's see, we do it on the other side too, real quick. Okay, so that's pretty strong, but um, what you can do with this layer is just so you don't have like this, it looks like somebody actually just went on there and spray painted it. If you go into filter, have you guys used filters at all? Do you know many of these? Some, yes, some, okay. Uh, <laughs> try to avoid using this too much. Mm -hmm. it, it can be really helpful, <laughs> but... Yeah, but like that's like a last resort to yeah. just like <laughs> pop. But yeah, just yeah. Blur is uh, super handy in many many applications. Gaussian blur is probably what I use the most. I use this for lighting, for shadows, um, for sometimes for moving people. Although motion, well, hey, yeah. I use motion blur too. Uh, depends on the situation. Anyways, right now what we're going to do is Gaussian blur. It'll open up a dialog box. Um, the preview is usually not that good, to be honest. I hate it. I wish you would just do it on the main screen. Yeah, I know. But, um, what you want to do is just fuzz it up a little bit. What oh, is preview? So you don't have that hard line. So it doesn't look like somebody spray painted with a template. Um, and again, you can start tossing these on 
one of those. So there's a light, really nasty light. Uh, so real quick, let's just do a shadow as well. Uh, you, I do this technique a lot for people. If you're, People are usually the last thing that go into your render. Or not. Maybe it's light. Depends what you do. Anyways, a um, quick way to do it is if you, let's pretend this is a person. Uh, and you want to drop a shadow down on the ground for them. If you, A, copy it over, uh, go Control Shift U, that'll desaturate it all the way. Control L will bring up the levels, and you just go all the way over. It makes whatever that shape was, i.e., a person, so not just a rectangle, but so you had traced out a person and cleaned them up already. Uh, what you can do now is, let's do this. Um, if we're pretending, again, that this is a person standing on the ground, literally control T for the transformation box perspective. Sun's way over here somewhere, so we're going to stretch him out. And uh, scale him up a little bit. So there's the guy's shadow. Uh, again, doing a Gaussian blur will help. And if you do have, say, pretend there's a ground surface here, and this is all. <laughs> Toss it on a multiply layer, and there's your shadow for a person. We could actually do a person. That'll probably come in a later lecture or tutorial. but. For this light, um, real simple, scale it up, put it over top, um, underneath the scone layer, filter, Gaussian blur, bring the opacity down, multiply, and again, can mask it, and because there shouldn't be a shadow where there's light, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Kaylee will do another simpler version of it right now, because I keep doing the hard way. <clears throat> okay, well, there, there's, there's, one, way to there's one way to do it. Now Kaylee's going to do the shadow in like two steps. No, it's not that fancy. Well, so this is your, I'm just going to hide this for a second. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so if um, this is your person, and you wanted to drop a shadow, uh, one way you can do that is if you just right click on the layer and you go to blending options, this dialog box will come up and it has like all of these um, kind of different effects that you can do. You can play with all of them. They're kind of fun. Um, and you just go to drop shadow. And then if you just click on this, then this dialog will come up. And um, what you can see here is it's the blending mode already for this layer will be on multiply. You can change the angle, usually you can see the preview of it. <laughs> um, and then also the opacity. So um, we just say OK. Now you can see that we have this little thing right here, but we can't see anything on our page. So if we just select these and we go to Create Layer, It'll say this, but it doesn't matter. So now our drop shadow is right here. And if I press V, you can see I have it right there. And it's on its own layer. So now you can um, 
control T. There's also a spread mode. Let me just see if I can find it. Brett's Photoshop is different than mine. Delete. So if you just do this again, blending options, drop a shadow. Okay, here. So we want to multiply. Opacity at 35% is fine. Um, if you change the spread and the size of your shadow, I don't know why we can't see it. That's just the, just like its position. Um, so you can see like, if I change the angle now, you'll see this thing kind of move around our object. So if you have lighting um, that you rendered out in um, V-Ray and you know which way the light's going, then you can kind of just um, mimic it with this. And then with the size, um, you can see that it's getting softer. So we say, okay, here it is, right click. It like doesn't really, it doesn't look like you're selecting it, like you're just on this layer, but if you just right click on here and go create layer, um, say okay. Now we have this. If we use this V, we can move it. And then because it's on its own layer now, you can um, erase. Is this erase? So now you have this drop shadow. There you go. Yeah, so two different ways of doing it. Um, yeah. Pardon me? Can you show me how did you create another layer or a separate layer only for the shadow? Um, so if you just right click on the layer, so this layer is just our sconce, just that one object. If I right click and I go to blending options and I click on drop shadow right here. Yeah. So, okay. So if you just right click <clears throat> on those effects, cause they're, yeah, cause they've been, um, they've been linked to that, that object. So if you were, if you were in plan, like technically you wouldn't really need to like make those shadows on like their own layer because you can adjust where that shadow sits around that layer. Um, but then if you just right click right here, then you'll see that this dialog comes up and you just go create layer. And you say okay, and then there it is. So the other thing we were going to show you guys today, I don't, do you have anything else you want to show them in Photoshop? Do you guys have any questions about Photoshop or anything that you have like are trying to achieve that you want us to just like quickly go through or? Is there anything you've seen that you want to try and do? Like online? No? No aspirations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. So the other thing, um, So we're going to have two videos.